We will have to start from the beginning. We will now do a uh, tic tac toe, starting off with uh, with Jenny, Stan, and Migi. Okay, Patty, ready and go. Patty, are you there? Yes, sir. Go. Start, sir. Yeah. Oh my God! What Jenny. the fuck? What the fuck is this? Jenny, it's not what you think. Oh. Get to pieces, you dirty pigs! You were both naked, intertwined with each other, sucking each other off, eating each other out, and it's not what you think it is. I am not stupid, Stan. You were fucking my kid brother. You were fucking my kid brother. <laughs> Jenny, please calm down. I was just Shut trying the to. Fuck up, you faggot! You make me want to puke. You're disgusting. I should have known that you two love dicks. You're disgusting, Stanley. You shitty bastards. I work my ass off to support both of you, and this is how you repay me? I turn my back and you both screw me? And you, my dear little brother, how look me go? I know you were queer since you were little, but cocksucker of cocksuckers! How could you do this to me? To me who virtually raised you! You got a great body, Jenny! I am not your kid brother anymore. I am 21, and I'm tired of you lording over me. You always make me feel incompetent, Inadequate. <laughs> you try to humiliate me every chance you get. You're incompetent and inadequate, and you're screaming, faggot. <laughs> you cause me so much shame and dishonor every day. You are great dishonor to our family name and abomination. Do you understand that? <laughs> How can I be a success in this life? Every chance I get for a promotion is ruined because of you. That's not true. What have I to do with your professional life? You wouldn't understand, you son of a bitch. I am a teacher. I am supposed to fix everything, including you. But here's something you can understand. Mamang and Papang. Do you know that our parents died because of you? No. That's a lie. You know better. They. You know the truth. You know better. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry, sorry. You know the truth. Go, continue. Truth. No! That's a lie. You know the truth? They were killed in a car accident. Yes, there was an accident, but they died because of you. Because you are gay. The whole family is being punished by God because you are gay. You are a disgrace. No! You are an abomination, a curse, a despicable error in God's creation. Stop it. Please, stop it! Jenny, stop torturing him. Please, Miggy is not well. So are you. Both of you are sick. Both of you are bed off dead. May God strike you dead. Miggy! What happened? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God! Louis breaks out. I tried to warn you. Your brother was not well. He tried to shoot himself earlier, but I stopped him. He didn't need any of your cousin or your gay passion tonight. 
Nikki, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I love you too. I tried to deny it, but I love you, Miggy, more than I love your sister. No! Thank you, people. Take five. So, what do you think? I don't know. It's different. Very riveting. Very intense. Pretty intense, huh? That's the very intention. There are parts of it that I really like, but some parts, well, you can rework them a little bit, can't you? Re rework? Just a tiny little bit. Y you want me to change it? Just a slight tweak. Tweak? What? How? Why? Well, no, don't you no, like well, it? I, I mean, what don't you like? What do you want changed? Honestly, there are just too much words, too much swearing. <laughs> too much? Yes. As your Stanley character says, he didn't need any of your cussing and gay bashing tonight. So I think the audience doesn't need to be bombarded with your cussing and gay bashing night after night. He was talking about the immediate cause of a character's suicide. I know. I understand. But just the same, perhaps the coarse language can be changed. Coarse language. Okay. <clears throat> changed to what? You know. Something less crude and rude, something less vulgar, less obscene. You are the playwright. You have the gift of gab. What's wrong with how it is now? Mm, nothing. It's perfect. It's just some of the words. Which words? Well, the F word, for example. Fuck? What's wrong with the word fuck? No, no, no. Well, it's not really the nicest of words. The character is angry. She's at a loss for sophisticated words. One can be angry without being verbally foul and filthy. Sure. But it's not in her character to be quiet and nice. She's a nag. She needs to scream obscenities, to be vicious and noxious. Just, just try it, okay? Just for me. I know what the producers want. And this plays, it is, it won't make the cut. I want your play to work. I want you to succeed. I think that you have a vision, but this is Ilo Ilo we are talking about. People here are very conservative, tight ass conservative. You have a message, and if you want this play to see the light of day, you just have to rework it. I don't see how changing the words will help. Trust me, my friend, I'm on your side, but we have to take caution. It's not the best time for the theater this part of the world. The last thing that we want to do is to offend to scandalize and to drive the audience away. But words are all I have. I chose those words precisely for their maximum explosive powers to make the scene work. I want to help create a theater that speaks the vocabulary we use day to day. I want to draw a new audience into theater and show them why it is exciting. Can you hear me? Words are all I have. Yes, yes. You have the gift of words. Use it. Now, listen to me. I know how important those labored and carefully cobbled words are for you. But to a director and to producers, for that matter, scripts are only blueprints. They are not cut in stone. I'm a playwright. Every word I use is a conscious choice. Film, television, music, video, and the internet have changed the way we think. We have no need to be told stories in the same constipated language our parents or their parents used. We need to reinvent theater to serve our own purposes. We need to do theater in a language that engages us. I use words for their most explosive effect. That's where my art lies. So why should I change it? Try to rewrite it a little bit. Just try. For me? Think of it as an artistic exercise. Keep the intensity of the scene, but soften the language. Refine it so that the play can open up to a larger audience, be more people-friendly. Soften the language. <laughs> people-friendly. Clean it up. Make it more palatable. We really don't want to offend our audiences with audiences' sensibilities with crass and disagreeable language. I know you want to draw the younger audience, correct? I'm sorry. I know you want to draw the younger crowd, but those other generations behind us are still the bigger of our audience. They still control our market. You have a reputation to protect, and I have mine. We need to work together. I don't know. 
I don't see how changing the language will help. I just try. See you in a week? Uh, I guess so. Try. Okay, continue. Jenny. My God! What the fudge? What the fudge is this? A pumpkin, pumpkin pie. It, it's not what you think. Now that's a Jesus. You were both plain and exposed. Pretzelized with each other. Nibbling body parts. And it's not what I think it is. I am not the village idiot, Stan. You were fudging my Shh. brother. You were fudging my kinder. Jenny, please calm down. I was just Be quiet, trying. you better ask. You make me want to throw up. You're dislikable. I should have known that you two love carrot sticks. You gross me out, Stanley. You ungrateful traitors. I worked so hard to support both of you, and this is how you repay me? I turn my back and you both mess up with me? And you, my dear little brother, how long can you go? I know you were colorful since you were little, but fairies of fairies, how could you do this to me? To me who virtually raised you? Get a great fucking Jenny! <laughs> I am not your kid brother anymore. I am 21. And I'm tired of you governing me. You always make me feel incompetent and inadequate. You try to humiliate me every chance you get. You are incompetent and inadequate. And you're a flashy fusha cake wearer. You cause me so much shame and dishonor every day. You are a great dishonor to our family name. Do you understand that? How can I be a success in this life? Every chance I get for promotion is ruined because of you. That's not true. What have I to do with your professional life? You wouldn't understand. I am a teacher. I am supposed to fix everything, including you. But here's something you can understand. Mamang and Popang. Do you know that our parents died because of you? No. That's a lie. You know better. They were killed in a car accident. Yes, it was an accident, but they died because of you. Because you are gay. The whole family is being punished by God because you are gay. Shush. You're a disgrace. You're an abomination, a curse, a despicable error in God's creation. Stop. Stop. stop it. Jenny, stop, stop, it. stop please, tormenting stop him, please. Miggy is not. I adore no. you. Both of you are sick. Both of you are better off dead. May God strike you dead. Miggy! What happened? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God! He blew his brains out. I tried to warn you. Your brother was not well. He tried to kill himself earlier, but I stopped him. He didn't need any of your cussing or your bashing tonight. Miggy, uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm so sorry. I, I loved you. I ain't tried to deny it, but I loved you, Miggy, more than I love your sister. No! Well... I spent the whole week on revisions. I integrated your suggestions, and by exaggerating the language, I thought you'd begin to see that. You know, it's you know, perfect. You, you liked it? Very much. It sounds very refreshing, very new. But the whole energy of the scene has been diffused. When Furious Jenny screams, what the fudge? I can't help but think of a piece of chocolate. Ah, oh, you think too much. 
funny that they thought about the chocolate fudge because I thought about it too. And admittedly, it is easier to swallow than the F word. The language change really makes it better. You wanted it palatable. But pumpkin pie, pretzelized, and <laughs> oh my God. carrot sticks? Really? I was just kidding. Serendipity. What? Congratulations. I think the sanitized language and the food illusions worked. They actually made the play a lot better. Better for whom? Oh, my dear boy. For the audience, of course. I really don't see how it could be better. The play is not supposed to be swallowed so easily. It's not meant to make the audience comfortable. It's supposed to make them think. Uh, and it does. About chocolate delights and pumpkin pies? <sighs> Please. Can we go back to the original now? You said this was just an artistic exercise. Well, I've done it, and I'm not happy with the result. I want to go back to the original version. You can't. Why not? This version sucks. It cannot go on like this. You are right. It <laughs> cannot go on like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> A few more changes are necessary. More changes? This feels like tic-tac-toe. Tic-tac-toe? Oh! <sighs> You mean knots and crosses? The pencil and paper game with X's and O's? Knots and crosses, tit tat toe X, E, O, Z, same difference. Two players take turns marking the spaces in a three by three grid. First player to succeed in placing three respective marks in a horizontal, vertical and diagonal row wins the game. I love that game. Why do you think revisions to your play feel like tic-tac-toe? Because the only winning move is not to play. Oh, you know that is not true. I really want you to help. I really want to help you succeed. That's why I'm guiding you to survive in this business. I want your play to be great and to be a box office hit too. Now, we need financial backing to stage your play. So you want to make some people happy. I know you want your voice to be heard, but first, you need a platform on which to stand. My play was great as it was. No question. It was perfect. It just... Jet nga, it was perfect, though. Okay, okay. That's one word, na perfect. No <laughs> question, it was perfect. Yeah, good. It just needed some adjustments. But why does anything need to be changed at all in the first place? To make the producer happy. <laughs> the producer. Who is this goddamn producer? Can I have a word with him or her? Here I am. Who are you? The producer. You're here. Uh. <laughs> I've been watching. Of course, I was curious about what kind of play I would be funding. Mm -hmm. It's nice to finally see you. You are no coward, but you are a brilliant dramatist. You really are. I love the play. It was much better before. I love it that there were no profanities in this play. You are so creative with words, but there has to be a few more changes. More changes? Just minor changes. Listen, uh -huh. I know that you have a vision and a message to the world, young man. And it is good and noble and yada, yada, yada. But let us see if we can add a few more changes to improve the play for bigger audiences without sacrificing your message. Shall we try and workshop it? I don't know, but since you're producing the play, well, I guess I should just say all right and go ahead. Actors, take your places, would you please? Now, actors, we are going to workshop this piece. Let us try and see how we can make this even better. All I want you to do is to feel free to follow the flow. Let the moment take you where it leads you. Learn to improvise as we go along. Is that okay? <laughs> Yes. Well, considering that we are workshopping the play, do you think we can ad lib some of the lines or <laughs> change some of the words? <laughs> of course not. Oh, now, now, why not let them? As any self respecting director will tell you, the script is just a blueprint. <laughs> it is not written in stone, isn't that right? Will you say something, please? My play is being butchered here. What can I say? As a director, I've always been one for improvisations. What feels right for the actors? I look at their choices, supervise them, 
coach them, moderate it if and when necessary. I, I think you should let them. Who knows what these actors can bring to your play? Mm, now you see. Okay, folks, we will do improvisations. Give the play your best shot and don't be so tied to the original. Don't be afraid to stray a little bit. A new idea is a long, long way. Just let the play lead you where it wants to take you. Start when you're ready, all right? Oh my God! What the Stop. fuck? Stop it right there. Do we really need to be sacrilegious? It's the first line of the dialogue and we're already using God's name in vain. Um, can we say something else instead? Goodness, perhaps? Yes, goodness. Jenny, take it from the top. Oh my goodness! What the fudge? Wait, what the wait. fudge is this? Try Mamma Mia. Mamma Mia! Try Mamma Mia! So, i ask mo na. Exciting. Exciting. Excitement, kada tals again be try, wait, wait, try, mama mia. Nah, better. <laughs> mama mia. <laughs> mama mia, instead of my goodness. Great. Now people will think of mama mia spaghetti and chocolate fudge dessert while watching this play. <laughs> How can people really enjoy the play if we have psychologically made them hungry? Now all they will hear is their stomach grumbling throughout the play. Oh, don't be so hard on yourself. Okay, folks, let's try it again. Mamiya! Uh, what the fudge? What the fudge is this? Pumpkin pie, it is not what you think Now that's oh. Jesus swine! Stop! Here we go again. <laughs> really now. Can we please refrain from using the Lord's name in vain? Why not try... Tell that to the Marines! Because it's a cliche? <laughs> okay, what about... Tell that to the mountains! That's far out, but go ahead. It's just a workshop, right? Okay, try it again. Actors, please. Tell that to the mountains, let Chon wanna be! <laughs> You are both plain and exposed. Jack and Jill pretzels with each other. Nibbling body parts. And it's not what I think it is. I am not the village idiot, Stan. You were fudging my brother. You were fudging my dead brother. Stop. Jenny, please, Stop. I was just trying to... Interrupt. But... Why don't we change the brother's character into someone more distant, like a driver or a houseboy? <laughs> yes, a houseboy. No! <laughs> Not. Because that's really retarded. That will change the whole dynamics of the play. But it's all for the better, eh? I mean, why would Stan be fudging his brother-in-law? Because that is the crux of the play. <laughs> Two weak men forced to live together under the wings and claws of a very crazy woman who is close to their heart. Come on, Noel. Let's just try it on for size, okay? We're just workshopping your play. Nothing is permanent. Besides, isn't a houseboy as important in the household as a brother-in-law? Let's have Miggy as their houseboy, all right? Actors, begin. I am not the village idiot, Stan. You were fudging the house boy. You were fudging our house boy. Jenny, please talk quieter. I was just trying Hello, Joe, you to. You ass. You make me want to puke. You're ew. Yeah. I should have known that you two love Toratot. You grossed me out, Stanley. You ingrates. I worked so hard to support both of you, and this is how you repay me? I turn my back and you play with me? And you, dear little Etchus Etchus houseboy, how low can you go? I knew you were green blooded joke last in the day I hired you, but you fatigued up into the shot, right, nation? 
How could you do this to me? To me who hired you? To me who virtually adopted you? Get a grip, Acting Jenny! I am not your houseboy anymore. I resign. And I'm tired of you acting like a parrot queen over me. You always make me feel incompetent and with no one. You try to humiliate me every chance you get. But you're incompetent and bubita chaka. You're nothing but a flashing fusha cape wearing, second hand, trying hard, gender bender, mm. copycat. You cost me so much shame and dishonor every day. Your great dishonor to our Familia Zaragoza. Uh -oh. Do you understand that? How can I be a success in this life? Every chance I get for promotion is to ruin because of you. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a super lie. What's my internet connection with your professional life? You won't understand your chuba chinyas chararat. I am a teacher. I'm supposed to fix everything, including you. Pat, Pat. So pat, Pat. Ikatada, be. Ikatada. We'll proceed. Anyway, you know what to do there naman. Uh, we'll proceed to uh, Professor Sarabia because uh, Lou has a mask pa. Lou, are you there, Lou? Lou? Here, sir. Yes, okay, sir. Okay, okay. Sige, be. Uh, Test audience. See, you start from test audience. Mm. We yes, have a sir. test audience here. And Q. Test audience. <laughs> we have a test audience here? Of course. Noel, Alex, this is Professor Sarabia. She's a guidance counselor at the University of Iloilo. Ah, is this going to take long? Because I have an appointment with my dentist in about an hour. No, no, not at all. Actors, places, please, and begin. What the fudge? What Wait. the fudge? Are they having sex? Hmm. Are those two men having sex? Yes. Can you please not interrupt? Oh, why not? I was invited to preview this play. This is not good. I don't like to see two men having sex. It's gross. What's wrong with it? What's right about it? They're homosexuals. They're sick. That's wrong. This is a play. It's obscene. You don't have to promote homosexuality. <laughs> Hello? As if homosexuality needs promoting for me? No. I am not promoting homosexuality. I'm just artistically recreating a slice of reality to drive home a point. Uh, a slice of reality. Mm. Were you sexually abused as a child? <laughs> what? <laughs> no! I am a playwright! I don't have to personally experience everything that I write. <sighs> as I said, I'm just capturing vignettes of real life. Uh, on the Ilonga stage? Homosexuality on the Ilonga stage? And you call that real life? Are you high or something? You're a pervert! <laughs> Professor Sarabia, I'm surprised at your homophobia and amnesia. I thought you'd be smarter and more open-minded than the average Steve Dor. I don't know if you've noticed, but the world is changing. <laughs> Ilo Ilo has not been spared of the gay consciousness. Mm, so you admit that your play is about gay consciousness. No, the play is not about homosexuality or gay consciousness, no. It's about people who discover special relationships under most trying circum circumstances against a common enemy. Think of it as Filipinos coming together for a revolution against a dictatorship. You mean like the people power as a revolution? <clears throat> Bingo, your memory is <laughs> coming back. I don't like political plays. And besides, while most people in EDSA were homosexuals and gay artists, many were not. And they did not make love on the streets. You are impossible. You are pretentious. You call yourself a playwright. I don't think you have a play. I think <sighs> what you have is an occasion of gratuitous sex on stage. Why do your characters need to have sex on stage? Because it's an action vital to the play. <laughs> 
<laughs> Why are you so afraid of action in a play? You're so afraid of physical action, sexual action, violent action, dramatic action. Why must action and narrative be sacrificed for character, metaphor, and debate? What is theater then without great characters and issues? If I must say so, I think the theater has gone down after Shakespeare. I'm not saying that I'm not interested in exploring multifaceted issues or complex characters in my play. On the contrary, that's exactly what I want to do. But I want to do it through what the characters do, not just what they say or think. <sighs> Young man, I grew up watching naturalistic theater with one set and forth four characters, all of whom talk about things that happened in the past until they are led to some sort of internal character revelation. That was also fine to me. And I didn't turn out so bad. If you were happy with those, fine. There's still plenty of it to be found. I'm just saying the world has changed. Movies, television, Facebook, and the internet have changed the way people think, the way we see, the way we absorb information. I write for my generation. And my generation has no need to be told the same stories you were told, in the same rigid and frigid way you were told, in the same antiseptic language that you were told. As a playwright, I want to be a voice for my generation. You want to be a voice of your generation. Listen to your opening line. What fudge? You try to discuss is, is the effort, but I can see... Stress mo. What the fudge. Kedo gina painchin di mo bala sa iya nga gina stress mo gin too much. Nga may akig kagap dapat. Yes, sir. You want to be the voice of your generation? Listen to your opening line. What the fudge? You try to discuss the F word, but I can see through it. This is not the play. This is an adulterated trash, pure garbage. Oh, is that a gun on the floor? Is there going to be some scenes of violence in this performance? Because this is all we need in these most difficult times. Lots of gratuitu gratuitous nudity, immoral sex, and violence on stage. In the movies, in magazines, over the internet, and everywhere. This have got to stop. From which planet did you come from, Professor Saranga? Huh. You can't insult me. I'm leaving. I'd rather suffer in a dentist chair than watch this smut. Then go! Because the theater does not need toxins like you, you constipated bitch! Now, now, that wasn't very nice. Yeah, it wasn't, huh? Just, what is it you want from me? All we want is a hit show. I think it's a fairly reasonable demand I put out my money to deliver a hit play. You don't really care about what my play means at all, do you? You don't care about my message. You don't care about my voice. You just want something that will create a profit. Hello? Isn't that what show business is all about? You can talk theater emancipation, developmental communication, and liberation for all you want, but show business is still a business. You must understand if people don't come to the play, we don't make money. We close the theater, no more plays. You're out of job, I'm out of job, nobody wins. But what about- I'm sorry. But it's just the way it is. Now, make me happy. Rewrite it, bearing in mind all the improvements we have made today. I think we have a great play in our hands. Fine. Give me a week, and I'll show you the new play. <laughs> okay, cut there. Uh... So what is important now is you have to familiarize really with your, with your lines, especially with Lou, with uh, Talia, with Sian, and with Jet. You have to familiarize your script because you will never get to, to explore more as far as emotions are concerned if you could not still memorize. I remember the lines are, 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 are really excellent lines, so you have to give life to the lines that uh, you have. And of course, Jeff, Jeff, okay, it's only Pat and... Uh, Nico, but of course there are a lot of adjustments also, Pat, because there are uh, all the words now. We are trying to call. I mean, we are trying to include everything. Then we we did not omit anything now. So please look into that closely as well. Uh, and then 
our next we will talk about uh, in our GC our next schedule because we have uh, a rehearsal on Saturday and show on Sunday so we we can look into that closely uh, but what is important uh, here is that as we go through with everything uh, you are really memorizing because again uh, we don't have the the luxury of the time uh, right we have to have the shoot in in a day other uh, a day of rehearsal before that, but the two days then should be spent then uh, worthwhile because we need to make it fast and really finish the shooting for a day. Uh, so far, we, we still do not have the schedule. The only schedule we have is for the shoot of In Bed With My Mother. Uh, it will be on December uh, 18 and 19. In fact, we have uh, a rehearsal on December 8. That's face-to-face -face rehearsal so that we will be ready then for the 18 of another day of rehearsal and then finally shoot then on the on the 19th.